Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITians. Hello friends, in this video lecture, this is a revision class for your upcoming NET examination and we shall mainly discuss here the CSIR NET 2019 December paper from the topic Electromagnetic Theory or Electrodynamics. So without further delay, we should stay ahead for the video. So let's start. The first question that we have to uh, we have uh, that has come that lay two coherent plane electromagnetic waves of wavelength 0.5 micrometer both have the same amplitude and are linearly polarized along the z direction. This fall on the y equals to zero plane. Their wave vectors k1 and k2 are as shown in this figure this is k1 this is k2 so if the angle of incidence that is theta is 30 degree this one is the 30 degree the fringe spacing of the interference pattern produced on the plane is 1.0 micrometer 0.29 micrometer 0.58 micrometer 0.5 micrometer so friends first of uh, first here look there are different uh, uh, monochromatic waves right and they have the same amplitude so they can interfere after uh, incident on this interface and they can produce the interference pattern. Now we have to remind the basic definition of the interference that when two monochromatic light a coherent monochromatic light interfere uh, uh, come uh, they can interfere positively. They can superpose. They can interfere positively, uh, constructively and interfere and we get the interference pattern. So how do you produce, how do you calculate the spacing of this interference pattern produced on the plane? So you have to first write in terms of the electric field, that is the electric field of, of the first one for the K1 vector and electric field for the second one where the wave vector is K2. So E1 equals to is the wave is propagating along the Z axis. Look here. This is uh, sorry. The electric field is along Z axis. So E vector will be along Z cap and the amplitude. Let us take it as A and so Z cap A e to the power iota omega T minus K1 R or K1 dot R where K1 is the wave vector and for E2 is the power iota T minus K2R where this is also the polarization along Z cap uh, that is Z direction and the wave vector is K2 and here mod of K1 and K2 are uh, almost uh, the same mod values are same. Now how do you write this K dot R vector for K dot R you need to find out the component of K's along the Y direction and component of K's along the X direction. So let us we have to resolve it into it. The, this is K1. So we have to take this the parallel component and this is the perpendicular component. Similarly for K2 this is the parallel component and this is the perpendicular component. So divide uh, you, we can write it as k1 equals to k1 sin theta x cap minus k1 cos theta y cap and k2 is minus k1 sin theta x cap minus k1 cos theta y cap. So all you have to do here just the com components you have to take and for k dot r along the y direction you have to take this yj cap and for the uh, r along the x axis you have to take this r vector as xi cap. So k dot r becomes k1 sin theta i x cap into x i cap or dot x i cap or dot x x cap since it is given here as x cap. So you can write k1 sin theta into x minus k1 cos theta into y and k2 dot r similarly we can write as minus k1 sin theta into x minus k1 cos theta into y. Now what we have to do we have to superpose this to wave vector uh, these two fields that is e equals to e1 plus e2 and go get the simplification so it will become z cap a e to the power i omega t into e to the power minus i k1 sin theta x minus k1 cos theta y plus e to the power minus i minus k1 sin theta x minus k1 cos theta y so now at the interface that is z equals to 0 we have to put this as y equals to 0 term so we get e as z cap a to the power i omega t to the power minus i k1 sin theta x plus e to the power i k1 sin theta x and e star will become z cap a to the power minus i omega t into e to the power i k1 sin theta x plus e to the power minus i k1 sin theta x. So i equals to e star into e. So n density will become the mod uh, the square mod square of e or e star e and it will be a square into 
2 plus e to the power i 2 k 1 sin theta x plus e to the power minus i 2 k 1 sin theta x. So we can also write in terms of uh, this exponential term that is a equals to i equals to a square into 2 plus 2 into e to the power iota k1 x plus e to the power minus iota k1 x by 2 or we can simplify it as 2 a square into 1 plus cos k1 x and since this is theta is 30 degree. Now we can have to find out the maxima. So for this maxima look here these are the constant values. So if since if cos k1 value x is maximum then we get the constructive interference. So cos k1 x is plus 1 for the maximum value of uh, k cos k1 x. So x n we get 2 n pi by k1. Similarly if we find out the x n plus 1 we will get 2 n plus 1 by pi into k1. So beta the fringe with this x n plus 1 minus x n that is 2 pi by k1. So we get the answer as 0.5 micrometer. So I think you understand how do you do have done this we have to take only the e1 e2 and then we have to take the two fields add them and then we take the intensity so we have to get get it mod square and then for the constructive or destructive we have to apply the condition if it is uh, in for the minima this should factor should be the list uh, minimum value so it will be cos k1x should be minus 1. So similarly we can get the fringe width for the destructive uh, two destructive uh, bands or two uh, dark bands. Okay. So let us take another question before that. Uh, do you know that we have already started our full length test for your upcoming net examination TIFR examination. So you can join our full length test and subject wise test and the cost have been kept minimum. It is actually 699 for the 15 test and also you can get our special interview guidance package for your integrated PhD PhD interviews and it is totally like the real interviews that you would face at in any institute like IITs, ISER, and research institutes in India. So you can join here. It is also the charges have been kept minimum that is 699 rupees per year. So for more information you can contact us on the telegram or you can contact mail us to da triple s 834 at the rate gmail.com. Let us take another example. The question is the permittivity tensor of a uniaxial and isotropic medium in the standard Cartesian basis is 4 epsilon naught 0 0 0 4 epsilon naught 0 0 0 9 epsilon naught where epsilon naught is a constant the wave number of an electromagnetic plane wave polarized along the x direction and propagating along the y direction in this medium is how much. So first of all you should know what is a permittivity tensor. Permittivity usually we take it as a number when we uh, talk in terms of the uniaxial isotropic medium but whenever this is my medium is anisotropic the permittivity is not a scalar quantity it is a tensile quantity and we have to take all the components of epsilon or rather permittivity along x direction y direction z direction so what is the permittivity tensor in terms of epsilon xx this is epsilon xx this epsilon xy epsilon xz this is epsilon yx epsilon yy epsilon yz epsilon zx epsilon zy epsilon zz okay so here it is has been given as the wave propagation is along the y direction so what will be the wave number now if this is the isotropic crystal the k naught that is wave number is omega by c but since it is the medium and the medium is anisotropic and we have to consider this one for any medium that is c will be reduced by c by n factor so that is v so k equals to omega by v or omega by c by n that is omega n by c or n can be written as root of this permittivity that is root of epsilon r. Now the wave is propagation along the y direction. So which quantity of epsilon we have to consider? This is the epsilon y y term. So epsilon y y term is 4 epsilon naught. So epsilon r equals to 4 epsilon naught divided by epsilon naught. So 4. So k equals to omega by c into root 4 that is 2 into omega by c that is 2 k naught. Let us take the last question of this session. Uh, which of the following is not a correct boundary condition at the interface between two homogeneous dielectric media? And these are the uh, given conditions for the two dielectric dielectric bound uh, interface and which is not the correct. And they are given in the following n cap is the unit vector normal to the interface. Sigma and Js are the surface charge surface current densities. So surface charge sigma has been given and current density Js has been given. So we know that the 
perpendicular component of d vector and parallel component of e vector they are like this way suppose there are two dielectric const uh, different dielectrics one having a dielectric constant epsilon one another epsilon two and these are the two different electric and displacement vectors okay and at this interface we have to take the parallel component to the boundary and perpendicular to the boundary so parallel component we can write it as a tangential component perpendicular component as the normal component and at the boundary the tangential components should be equal for the electric field okay and uh, the uh, normal component for the d1 d2 they are also equal uh, for the dielectrics so we can write this since this medium is the homogeneous dielectric so homogeneous means they have the uniform polarization and uniform magnetization now it has been given that sigma j's are the free surface charge free surface current so del cross d that is zero so uh, this d1 equals to d2 par parallel and this one that is the perpendicular components of d1 d2 is the surface charge density so this is sigma so d1 minus d2 equals to can be written as the sigma n cap now n dot d1 minus d2 is equals to sigma and n cross d1 minus d2 is not equals to zero so the parallel components of d1 d2 they can be uh, zero but the perpendicular component that is n cross d1 d2 is not is zero okay so the first answer that is the parallel component uh, this one that is the n cross d1 minus d2 equals to zero the perpendicular component of d vector is zero it is not right as there are sigma and j's has been given as the surface charge density and current charge density so friends for this video uh, i have already discussed many problems uh, that has already come in your previous year paper hopefully you will like this video subscribe to our channel thank you